On the breakfast this morning, Nigerians to assemble at Leki Tor Gate in Lagos State today as the second anniversary of the NSAS protests and the Leki massacre holds. Also on the breakfast, has the Police Act of 2020 and the Police Trust Fund Act of 2019 guarantee protection of human rights? We'll talk about police brutality and freedom of speech. And we have the usual analysis of today's newspaper headlines in Of The Press. We're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Thursday morning today. It happens to be the 20th of October uh, 2022. Um, but I mean, the 20th of October has uh, come to have a significance in Nigeria uh, since the year 2020. Who would have thought? Well, of course, uh, today happens to be the second anniversary of uh, what transpired at Leki, Lagos, Nigeria, at Leki Tollgate Plaza, uh, where there was a uh, uh, now, as it's come to be described, the judicial by the judicial panel of inquiry, uh, Lekki massacre. We'll be having extensive discovery discussions around it today. It'll be a special as we're focusing on that. You're welcome to the breakfast. My name is Kofi Bartels, and I am Messi Boko. Thanks for joining us. And as usual, we start with a look at the trending stories around the country, and indeed uh, discussions on the social space and. Uh, well, what people are talking about, a bit of analysis. And of course, one of those stories uh, generating a chatter online and attention happens to be the announcement by uh, Nigeria's Messi Minister of Works, uh, Babatunde Fashola, Works and Housing, I should say. Uh, he's a former governor of Lagos State, Babatunde Fashola, who said that um, the, the long awaited Second Niger Bridge, I mean, we've heard about the Second Niger Bridge for some years and uh, previous administrations, success, successive administrations have, have touted that as a signature project, uh, something to show their love for the southeastern part of Nigeria. When they go to campaign in uh, the southeastern states in the country, five of them, they say, we will complete the Second Niger Bridge. Well, um, the, 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 the incoming administration, whoever that will be next year, may not have to, you know, um, give that promise anymore. As uh, Babatunde Faji Fashola said that um, the second Niger Bridge will be completed uh, by December 2022 and open to uh, motorists to, to ply, is what um, uh, he's saying. Now, he stated this at a press briefing, of course, details of which were shared online, uh, to unveil the end of term uh, series entitled PMB and Administration's Core Card 2015 to 20. Uh, 23. And this is scorecard of the president's uh, performance as far as infrastructure <laughs> is concerned. Um, so this scorecard is designed to showcase uh, the achievements of President uh, Muhammad Buhari and his administration from 2015, like it said, to 2023. Now, what the Minister of um, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashela, who is also former governor of Lagos State, said is that the only factor delaying the opening of the, of the second Niger Bridge and the inauguration of the, uh, the construction uh, of the bridge, rather, is the construction of a link road by which the recent surge of flooding had uh, impeded. Um, so, you know, lots of reactions coming uh, as far as this is concerned. Mercy. So, so uh, let's even start off from the fact that usually when we have, uh, you know, government and backing projects and you have roads being constructed, you have a certain project being embarked on. These are basic things. I mean, once they are basic issues or basic infrastructure that should be provided, it comes with a democratic dispensation. These are taxpayers' money. It's not like you're doing the people a favor. But over time, uh, we seem to be, you know, jubilating overly excessively i would say over some of these projects it's like it, it's normal it's expected it, do we need to talk about what is expected or what should have been done and when we begin to so at, at this point in time i'm sure that we're expected to say hey that's and that's uh, commendable of course it should be commendable because you would say that you have different governments that has come in and out and have not been able you know to put their foot down to ensure that the project is completed this administration has done that right but you also would agree with me that government is a continuum and should we begin to you know be 
open about it and mean overboard about the particular issue. I don't think that's the case. It's just basic. It's necessary. It's natural. It comes to the people. Uh, it's not that, you know, you have a, the president or you have someone who's actually doing this out of their pockets and then you begin to say, oh, this is actually good. But like you mentioned, you know, in the, in, in the course of the conversation, you talked about the link bridge, which is very critical. Uh, so how do you even say that? As much as we're saying we're loading the uh, project, which is laudable, I mean, no one is saying uh, we're not commending it. We're also saying that these are basic necessities or infrastructure that should come to the people uh, as it is. Uh, but, but there are concerns about the second Niger bridge being completed with no access road, you know, or link to the people. So what then exactly is going on? So you're talking about uh, from Asaba, you know, and from Onicha and no links. Really? Should we be celebrating? Is that what we need to do? We need to move away from that uh, for the want of time quickly. There's a sad incident that happened yesterday in Lagos. And I think that this is actually not the first time. It's, it's uh, an occurrence that's been going on. And so traders and the Agberos clashed in at the uh, popular Lagos uh, Alaba International Market. The Igbos are saying that, you know, they've had enough of the Agbos extorting them, all of the taxation. And it feels like it's a tribal issue, you know, from all of the comments and reactions that uh, Nigerians are. I mean, if you get on Twitter, the Twitter space, it was even really the pictures that we saw, are very scary pictures. Uh, but we'll just quickly take this track. And when we return, we talk some more. Please stay with us. Interesting um, uh, um, scenes, Mercy. Uh, um, for those who do not know what we mean by Agberos, Agberos could be uh, called, you know, Tarts. Um, these are people who um, originally, initially, from the, it's a Yoruba word for someone who helps, and I, I'm, I hope I'm getting the Yoruba right, somebody who helps to uh, load a bus, to carry a load, or carry people, help passengers to get into a bus uh, for a fee. No Kayaye, or Kaye. Or Kaya. Kaya. Is it Kaya? Kaya is Kaya. Uh, are the people who help carry, carry your load. But those who help you get your goods and get the people into the bus for a fee, who help to load the bus, you know, so they can get going. Uh, it's loose translation for the Yoruba. And it's a, it's a long history, um, but these are uh, people who are victims of poor economic policies. That's how it started. And from poor economic policies, particularly the structural adjustment program of uh, the Ibrahim Babangida administration uh, in, the, in the 80s, which um, brought the Nigerian economy to its knees um, and you know really devalued the Naira. Um, these people who were in the communities who are known as Lagos boys, you know, who were popular in the, in the neighborhoods, had to go to the motor parks to see how they could fend for themselves. Now, after uh, after being um, victims of creation of economic um, poor economic policies, or failed economic policies. They are also now victims of uh, political, uh, of the politicians, let's call it political, um, uh, yeah, uh, but the political situation in the country because the politicians see them as um, a very useful tool for the prosecution of the political aims, and particularly ballot box snatching, uh, voter intimidation, which is now the new norm, all right, uh, and all that, and just basically being uh, uh, their representative of political thoughts. They're also seen by politicians in different parts of the country uh, as a, a tool for pol for political or for rent taking, you know, rent taking. They are part of the the infrastructure, uh, the internal generated revenue structure in several states where they get monies from uh, motor park uh, um, vehicles, commercial transport vehicles. You have 
uh, tricycle taxis, uh, the buses called downfall, the small ones now, the mini buses, uh, the taxis, um, even motorcycles pay them money. They get money from people who sell on the road, people who sell in the marketplaces, people who are hawking, people who have permanent stores, all sorts. All right. So these are taps. These are um, a combination of touting, street urchins, a combination of a lot of things. That's how Agberos can be described. Now, I think it's um, the Alaba International Market is a big market in Lagos. It's an Ojo local governor of Lagos. But quickly, I think it's um, we should try to de-emphasize the uh, tribal aspect of this. I was very impressed to see people who come from the southeastern part of, of Nigeria, some of them saying, oh, no, no, no. Yes, we know that uh, you have majority of the traders in the Alaba market who went on that uh, protest procession to say we are tired of being extorted illegally by these touts, probably called Agbero, um, because we pay taxes to Ojo local government area. We pay our dues as uh, members of these markets. And these guys are taking an undue advantage of us because of their intimidating um, stats and the kind of um, uh, authority they well wield in Lagos State to take money from us that is not statutory, it's not recognized, it's not recommended, it's not legal. Now, I've always said that there are uh, four tiers of government in Lagos State. You have the federal government, state government, local government, and Agbero. Because they've constituted themselves into a government. If they can walk into a shop, you know, in a market, in a state that is governed by laws, in a country that is governed by laws, and then collect rent, collect money, say, pay me money, then they are a tier of government. So the government has to do something about it. But we should de-emphasize uh, it being a clash of tribes, Igbos versus Yorubas. I don't think it's uh, Igbos who are protesting uh, and Yorubas being the touts. I mean, if you look at, uh, you know, Agbero's are touts in different parts of the country, yes, indeed, majority of them will come from the whole state. But it's not about that. It's just that they are there. So you have traders who are angry at the illegality of touts collecting money and rent from them, and they are simply protesting. It just happens that the majority of them are from the southeast. So let, let, let's, let's, let's paint it in the right picture so we do not escalate um, tribal tension, which uh, unfortunately certain persons are knowingly doing because it suits their political aims. No, uh, so, 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 so Kofi, I, I don't think as much as, uh, you know, you have raised a point and the point is it's okay uh, not to make it about a certain tribe. But you also, like I, I rightly mentioned, I should want to go back in history and you begin to look at all of this. Whether or not it is what it is, it's not that this is happening because it's ahead of the elections. If you look at the conflict that has been going on, it's been on for a very long time. And most times to address the current issues, you need to know where this is coming from. So you're talking about addressing the root causes of the situation. So now, it's unfortunate that perception is, you know, really greater. It has a lot of, you know, uh, hold than facts. And so how people perceive or what people think about you over time might not be what it is. I don't know if you, so, 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 so you have an issue of perception and it's a perception and that's how the people feel. So this is not even me coming to say that, oh, it's a tribal issue. It's how the people have reacted over time. And if you look at the tweets and all of the comments and see the reaction and how people feel, because these people are, I mean, human beings over time, you talk about people who have emotions and what have you. So um, it, it's a perception. It's because of their encounter counter and experience over time and that's why this perception is held it probably might be wrong it might not be the case but it feels like that's actually on the majority and something needs to be done about it especially for a city as you know Lagos State what, what which is you know to? so the, the, the perception that you know this you're, is about a certain tribe that Yorubas are, uh, uh, no 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 not necessarily the Yorubas are saying that the Igbos have had a lot I wish we talk about you know those who are in business we're not just saying that in the Alaba market or every other market you just have a certain tribe Okay, so I get where you're coming from. I'm saying that uh, just like you would have in every you know situation or in every establishment or organization, you have people from different tribes. But you also find out that a lot of persons, there are tribes that are dominant. And if it feels like the oppression, let's begin to look at it. What do you begin to think? You begin to think that this is actually you know the fact that okay, because you're not from here. Well, I, 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 I mean, so, 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 so all the so time we, ha we have to now analyze to see if it's a fallacy or not. And it's, it doesn't hold water because... No, no, no. It, so can, you, you, can, but, can but it cannot be... Just to learn. I, was, I held the thought first. So yeah. I'm not saying that, you know, it cannot be dismissed. But it would be very critical 
especially at this point in time. And I think it's responsible, it will be responsible of the government of this state, which, I mean, you know, everyone has a right to movement. Everyone has a right to be, you know, in any parts of the country as, as long as you're not a threat to national security or the state at itself. So I would, I would actually say that if this perception has been going on, like you say, it's a fallacy. It's, it's not okay for us to just sit up here and say it's just a fallacy. I think that it's important that, you know, there be a thorough investigation. It should be looked at if this is something that has been going on for a very long time. Right, and this is the perception of the people because of how they have been treated, because of the experiences that they get. We're talking about extortion. We're talking about a lot that's going on, and to to talk about who, when you look at the tribe, which tribe is dominant in terms of business in this particular region, you find out that that's the tribe. And so we probably just feel like, hey, it's just an attack on us, which might not be true. So that's why I say usually it's just general that perception. It, perception is what it is. Uh, what people think about you and what you are is a different thing. So it's, it's so, a lot so of work to begin to come. Because, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, um, I think what, I, what I'm saying is, uh, Mercy, that I, I'm not about perception, not per se. I'm saying that um, uh, the situation calls for, uh, uh, first of all, the escalation of, 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 of and de-emphasizing the tribal aspect of it. Number one. Number two, that um, uh, if you look at it holistically, these doubts are a menace to society everywhere. Um, um, they are not out you know, to target a particular tribe. They are out to, to enrich themselves. And they don't care who is, who is at the receiving end as far as there's money to be made. So the Iya who is in Obalinde or the Mama who is in Ketu, who is from um, um, uh, Jebodo and came to Lagos to sell, you know, or who is from uh, maybe Ali Mosho and uh, just is an indigent, is a victim as well, you know. Uh, and they, they, they're all victims. You know, in Port Harcourt, you have Agberos who are victimizing even in, it's not about indigenous knowledge. It just happens to be that uh, the people who are at the receiving end this time are from the uh, majority of those in the market are from the southeast. But if we, we, we do not enlighten the people and we do not educate them to realize that um, we need to look at this from the point of the issue at hand, which affects everybody, you know, because you have people who are uh, from, from south, different south, tribes. Yeah, in the market, yeah, people. It just happens to. So if if you go to Port Harcourt, for instance, Eco Cruz Spare Parts Market, they stand up and start shouting, and they will say, "Oh, okay, uh, River Supply against." But the same Rivers Agberos or River Stouts, Port Harcourt Stouts, okay, are also attacking people who are from River State as well. So then we we need to now enlighten people, and people need to be aware. You know, I'm not saying we don't have factors historically. Um, especially during election periods that uh, will mean that some people from outside West Lagos State are being targeted. That is there. But for, for, the, for the touts, they affect everyone. And um, we need to let people understand that and they emphasize. But we move on. Um, this is a quick one. We'll make it quick on this. A court nullifying two APC uh, assembly primaries in, and, um, in, in Yobe State, which is uh, in the northeastern uh, part of the country. Uh, this is uh, during a delivering... Uh, of a delivery of a judgment uh, by Justice Fadima Aminu. She directed uh, the APC to conduct fresh primary elections uh, for the affected positions within 14 days. All right, so that's that. I think it's uh, clear what the judge has ordered. It's clear what the court has said. And the, the Electoral Act is also clear as well. Um, the affected constituencies are uh, Fika and Galfa and Jas Cusco. Constituencies. I would uh, let you know how it goes. Yeah, Matthew. And, ju and just quickly, as we move on on this particular issue, is that um, as much as it's been said, because if you look at the engagement and what people are saying, uh, it feels like when the obvious has been stated, there's no need to, you know, to you know further engage, and that's why that hasn't really had a lot of engagement from Nigerians. The court has actually stated, and it should be. But I, I think that it's it's time that we, you know, put our acts together as a country, and that would mean that you have different political parties putting their acts together because it doesn't necessarily make uh you know it's not even respect it doesn't make sense. So I'm, I'm trying to be very polite with the choice of my words this morning, uh, where you would have a political party uh, now having, you know, two primaries. So you, it therefore means you have different faction. And that's what's going on, including the, uh, you know, contending parties. It, it goes to show that, you know, an element is, is lacking and the element of internal democracy. Uh, until we get to that point where internal democracy is strengthened, then I'm sure that we would always have a situation where you have 
uh, factions. <laughs> so you always have two congresses, two, you know, two elections. And wh where does that come from? People are dissatisfied. Why are they dissatisfied? Because they feel that they've been cheated. And so they'll always go for it. I hope that as we progress as a country, we would get our acts right. And that's the much we can take this morning on Top Trending. We take a break and when we return, it'll be time for us to go through the papers. We call it After Press. Izzy Kanyai took would join us all things. Bini Kual, please stay with us. <laughs>